the 19th day, September 2023. Welcome back. I'm your host tonight, Dana Durnford. Welcome to the crazy land. I was thinking the poll tonight should be, should there be a registry for people that are claims nuclear is like a banana or a potato chip or walking in sunshine to bar them from medias to put them into civil suits so entire countries can sue them uh, we can put Ralphio Grossi on the top of the list Grossi the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency is making some pretty bold claims over the years but uh, this one out does them all He's claiming uh, nothing got out of there, only 2.2 grams. That's uh, Reactor 3 at Fukushima. But the French models that radioactive followed over 20 days of the cesium-137 at around 10 million becquerels per square uh, cubic meter, and based upon, no doubt, number three, the Medusa. Uh, you also got to remember there's another three reactors that have lost their entire 40-year inventory, which they keep in the fuel pools. There's two of them at the, to at the top. Now, one's supposed to be just for temporary storage and transferring fuel from the reactor core, which is at the top. And then eventually that gets moved over all underwater at the same time to the, the main pool but they don't have a repository in Japan or anywhere else on the planet. And there's 70 of these boiling water reactors in America, for instance, and they're all stuffed with decades of reactor cores because they have nowhere to put it. So like number three, which doesn't exist, they built this contraption that doesn't physically touch it to pretend they're getting the fuel out of a building where the fuel pools are long gone. Then there's reactor four, and I mean, that's level. They should just, both that one and reactor three should be stripped to the ground, obviously. But the idea was leave the stump there and then pretend they can put these contraptions. That's the contraption for reactor three and the contraption for reactor four. And then roll out the apologies. Now, I built, the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watched our website, on the very first week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. Okay, so the building 4 is actually to your right. And obviously that should have been stripped right to the ground, there's nothing left. And Arnie is pretending it looks like the building that is behind him, which he's lots of articles uh, where he's been quoted. It's like getting a crush pack of sugar. It's, and this is the contraption they put on it. This is all done by cranes. There's nothing inside of it. You, and you can't get inside. The building doesn't actually exist anymore. Right? I got to go through all this ev at the beginning of every show because apparently the world is stupid as rocks they don't even know what the buildings look like well, it's not their fault you got the media contributing to it con considerably worldwide this is just for the degenerate medias that came out and pretended that their crews in this case i named them for you by the way uh, abc cecilia vega is actually a white house correspondent Pretending they're in a building that don't exist. Do you think that doing that because they're bored? Do you think they're doing that because the buildings are actually intact, despite the fact it's obviously they're not? So then you're, you're up against a lot of these different types. Uh, truth check, not fact check. He's a professor of nuclear engineering at a university. And a movement by the nuclear mythbusters, which is Taiwan, a community of pro-nuclear scientists and students, there was around 2,200 of them, academics and former uh, university students, professors, and alumni had spammed the internet for several years after Fukushima, and just from Taiwan nuclear industry alone, 
literally all the nuclear students in the university were out challenging um, accurate narratives with propaganda in order to cause devoid and promote nuclear jobs because they're in universities, they need a job when they get out. And so they willingly went into it and they were to consent to the universities and the academics and professors. And then in July 23rd, uh, the author's professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering. Wow. Holy smokes. Eh? Can you imagine how smart this guy is? But he says that the destroyed buildings that I showed you over and over and over will happily show you over and over again if that's what it takes. That discharge, discharge. There's the discharge, by the way. The discharge. It's like throwing a sugar cu cube, like three sugar cubes a gram each into the ocean. The building should be just whatever's left of it. This stump of a 190-foot building should be just razzed to the ground. There's nothing left. And the total amount of radioactivity is approximately 2.2 grams. But uh, the buildings have... 10 to 12 reactor cores stored at the top of it in two fuel pools because you don't have a repository. And we, we've covered the actual headlines of all of this many times over the years. So much evidence, we, I'm not going to do it to you. But, you know, so there's only 2.2 grams of tritium got out, but these communities are not banned by tritium for the last 12 years. Uh, they didn't abandon these cities and these malls and banks and universities and institutions and and graveyards and everything else because of tritium. Tritium has never been in the equation. It's definitely not in that one. And difficult return zone is actually a nuclear meltdowns, that nuclear wastelands. <coughs> There's four reactors. I showed you two because they're very obvious, those two. And each one of them is equal to hundreds of Chernobyls. In this depiction, this is from the mainstream media, the Japan Times, where they're showing pictures of farmers harvesting rice right alongside of thousands and thousands and thousands of one-ton bags in a nuclear wasteland where nobody lives at, for a market. And that the food was banned by 55 countries in 14 prefectures because the buildings are actually gone. Despite what the mass hypnosis machine has tried, has tried to um, distort the reality, the buildings are actually gone. And that the International Atomic Energy Agency has stated clearly from the get-go, I would like to emphasize the release of the treaty, the treaty, which is a complete unbelievable misdirection. Stored at Fukushima Daiichi, they can't contain the water. They have to release it. It's pure uranium plutonium. They're pouring it over. Is a national decision by the government of Japan, and that the report is neither a recommendation nor an endorsement. In other words, they're not neutral. They're nothing. They, they only exist outside of a figuratively speaking as a corporation, a subsidy of a bigger corporation. But the media has put up as the final say but officially to mitigate their abilities to be lost. And so I'm thinking about suing Raphael Grossi for claiming that there's nothing but tritium coming out of buildings that don't exist anymore, and that have been hemorrhaging it into the environment from day one. You can't contain this kind of stuff. You can't put it in tanks. And that if you took two of these buildings and stacked them on top, the, not buildings, but these stumps that should have been razzed to the ground, and stacked them on top of each other, is no higher than that one, which is one quarter of this one, which the top stack is right here. So this part here into the ground is higher than two of them put together. Still won't reach. And think about how big the buildings actually are, because that's 150 feet wide and 190 feet tall. But when you see it on the ground, and look at the ground, it's all covered in steel sheets. And, and uh, so they cemented the ground, they paved the ground, they cemented it in steel sheets like that, then they paved it and done it several different times. Um, 
at the nuclear meltdown site itself eventually. Okay. Get that out of the way. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully nobody asks me that question again. Just kidding you. So there's 55 countries banned of food for a decade. They should have banned it, obviously, for a billion years. And so they just replaced these people and they lifted the restrictions in the majority of the countries. All right, and away we go. We're going to pick up where we left off last night. We didn't cover all... So at the very end of the show, I covered um, the set that I have put together about asking the simple question is, why are almost every single nuclear power plant worldwide surrounded by farms? What's up with that, Dana? That's a great question. Before Fukushima, 100 beckles kilogram seized was nuclear waste, but after it was considered safe to eat. <coughs> Now remember, um, France had radioactive fallout in America, Canada, at 10 million becquerels a cubic meter of air. But there was many other studies that quantifies these assertions, including that one. So you got these reporters hanging out at the nuclear meltdown, but 16,000 people ran away. They didn't just quit, they ran away. They're like, no. <laughs> Everybody's dropping dead over there. I'm, I'm out of here, dog. And so this is media pretending they're 100 feet above the stump of reactor 4, which should have been razzed to the ground. The, the only reason they left it there was to fake the fuel pools, and the media was American media. Now we're seeing China, Taiwan, South Korea sustained assault upon the Asian population, claiming it's only 2.2 grams. And this is obviously coordinated by the International Atomic Energy Agency because they're the ones that are certifying those assertions. So that's had to be who, and they're supposed to be the leading go-to authority, but they have no, as I showed you just now, they have no authority. They're just a corporation. You're being hoodwinked, and you got no way back if you don't fight now. Health physicists in the U.S. worried about inhaling hot particles, and they had every right... This model is Norwegian Institute for Air Research of Xenon-133 radioactive fallout. Uh, this model, this part of the model is based on 19.5 days, 468 hours. There was also, and that was Xenon-133, which is that study there basically. There's a couple of different countries done the same study and got the same results. There was also, so you had Xenon 133. There was also a Krepton, by the way, uh, 133, I believe. There was a 1,500 atoms of radio, and there's multiple studies on the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from spraying the salt water on it. But you liberate the sulfur. Do you know this from the nuclear testing in the oceans? Well, which was a nuclear war, the radioactive fallout, it's the same fallout, it's the same weapons. You've been hoodwinked for 80 years. Time to grow up and say, okay, well, they got me good. And, and fool me once, shame on me, and fool me twice, I might not survive it. 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur per cubic meter detected sustained in the California ear. That's another study. Another study of the iodine-129 at a hideous, monstrous, abandon your country, iodine-131. That's going to saturate the thyroid glands of everything and everybody. So the most vulnerable species are the insects, the, the birds, uh, the babies that are eating them, frogs, fish, etc., etc., uh, dragonflies, you name it. Uh, there was another study of uh, iodine-129 with a 15 million year half-life. Now, this doesn't pulse very far, but it pulses almost at the speed of light every second for 15 million years. If it's in your thigh, right? And it is. Saturates the thyroid glands also of all the species. So it's not just going to be iodine or cesium. So, and I can show you, obviously, the cesium. And consider subscribing and all that other stuff. I don't know if it... Uh, 
Now let me find that cesium study so you can see that. Because it's important when we wring this all together and come out the other end. There we go. We're close to it now. Now, there we go. This is quite a frightening study, by the way. 200 and so. Let's just keep rolling for a second. We'll rewind and explain it to you. So at a thousand times normal, which is like 10 million times, uh, a, a million times normal, which but it, which is 10 million times for a cubic meter of air. By the way, that cesium they're talking about is a French study. And they had another study too, with, uh, based on 16 days of that radioactive fallout. And because you got 80 years of this radioactive fallout that covers the planet, and the gas, oil, and coal emissions don't do that. They don't go very far. They're not up <laughs> to the upper atmosphere. Your cardboard, your tin cans don't go up into the atmosphere. Let me do this again. So this is based on 16 days total, which is nine days after the meltdown. The last meltdown. So you had four meltdowns and eight fuel pools detonate. And the, the plume models, the, 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 the numbers, the studies, the academic studies, and then the side effect of all this, 50 becquerels a kilogram in humans, adults, adults. You put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, you can't see it. So try separating 50 of that and drop it on your floor and, and find it later in the dark or, or with a magnifying glass, rather. Good luck. Because, you know what I'm saying, right? You put 200 million of these on the head of a needle, you can't see it. How are you going to know? You can't, f you can't see it or smell it or hear it or taste it or feel it or touch it or pick it up or perceive it. And 50 becquerels a kilogram in a human leads to irreversible lesions in the vital organs because it's in your body, pulsing energy every second, wrecking your chromosomes, your DNA. Your body has to repair all of that, too. It's also going to try to build a sarcophagus around it. That could take decades. But during that period, every pulse of energy, your body has to repair the damage. And if you get a lot of it, you know, like 50 becquerels a kilogram, you have irreversible lesions to your organs, which leads to, it's a bit of a mouthful in there, which leads to the immune system being compromised. So you're more susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. And this is true for all the species. And so they know that your plants this all makes sense, hopefully, maybe. <laughs> Fire leach and root uptakes, 134 cesium, 85 strontium, 65 zirconium in processing tomato plants. And, and so there's just millions of these studies of how plants uptake food and, and cows and everything else. So then it begs the question is why is almost every nuclear power plant surrounded as far as you can see, up tight to the facilities with farms. Because you'll see that worldwide if you start looking. Because that, that's part of the engineering. That's the quickest way to get the radiation out of the local area. Is put it in farmers' fields and they'll ship it off to market where you get sick and die and your loved ones get sick and your children get sick and your parents don't get to live out their retirement. And that the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation from these facilities on a rate you can't possibly comprehend, unfortunately. Think of an invisible snowstorm covering the entire planet in 20 days, and the snow never melts, and it never stops snowing, and flip that to radiation. And each of these 410 current plants are accomplishing that minimum each day. The models based on the release from the reactors are not even based on the amount that comes out of the fuel pool of each one of these. And each reactor building has two. So each reactor itself. So we've got four reactors, we've got eight fuel pools. Plus there's going to be a common spin fuel pool. There's no containment. It's all vented into the environment. That's why they're surrounded by farms. How l and so this is not, obviously this is going to have a health effect for humans, but this is, this is an omnicide machine. This doesn't just attack humans. It's not population control. This is planet exterminator. Not just cancer, 
how low doses of radiation causes heart diseases and strokes and uh, heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. Children with over 11 becquerels a kilogram start to see health problems. So why are they surrounded by farms? 11 becquerels a kilogram is literally nothing in the scope of what we're talking about. So it's impossible for them not to get that much. And they're shipping food from the nuclear wasteland itself. Columbia medical professor inhaling just one radioactive hot particle can cause a cancer. How are you going to avoid death when everything that comes out of these disease factories is a hot particle? Once you've gone through a chain reaction, everything's a hot particle. The influence of the development of the temperate fruit tree species, the potential for the uptake of radionuclides. They know that building farms around these places is the very last thing you should do. 50 becquerels a kilogram in adults lead to and this is an agreement between the International Atomic Energy and the World Health Organization, for goodness sakes. So why is almost every single nuclear power plant surrounded by farms? Thyroid cancer risks last the entire life after radiation exposure. Well, it, it infiltrates every cell in your body just by the pulsing at the speed of light of the energy every second for long past the human experience. Why is, and population is another one of their favorites too. Radiation in small doses could actually be disproportionately worse and that the doses spread out over time might be more dangerous than doses given all at once and renews importance after Fukushima. But also why we, is nobody on the entire planet acknowledging that it's quite the coincidence that every nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms or it's an agenda. And if you think it's a coincidence, it must be nice <laughs> to live in that kind of denial. Wall Street Journal reg officials sharply raised the radiation levels for the victims to get iodine pills after the meltdown. And they didn't even put the S on it because there was four meltdowns and then eight fuel pools that melted down. Eight. It's a bigger accident than all nuclear meltdowns we know about worldwide combined. It's magnitudes of orders above that and not just ten, orders of ten. 75 times, think about how ruthless you are that they done that. Because if not, they would have to order in every iodine pill on the planet, see? So the solution is just, they're just garbage. I'm better than them. I got a union job. I work for the government. My family thinks I'm special. Let's just write off everybody else. How sweet it actually is, yeah? Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 becquerels a kilogram of cesium-137. Irreversible heart damage for a fraction of what's in your food right now. And will continue to be. Think about this kind of hubris, this, this incredible arrogance, this pompous disregard for humanity to build these disease factories right in prime farmland everywhere worldwide. Does anybody really think that's an accident? Anybody that gullible, huh, huh, are you, are you, huh? Huh? And not only that, remember that these rivers feed tens of thousands of farms. Like Montebello is on that river. They lost, they admit to 400,000 gallons, 1.6 million liters. Claimed it was just tritium, not got into the, the Mississippi. But they didn't bother to tell you when it happened, which was four and a half months before that. So they waited another couple of weeks and decided to test the water, and wow, didn't find anything in the water. But did you test it when it happened? Of course they didn't. They did, but they're not telling you that. That's not, that's not contempt, that's murder. That's absurd genocide. And, and by proxy, because of its 
characteristics, it's omnicide. And it can't contain that, a lot of that, at any nuclear plants on the planet, by the way. It was a revolting display of hate upon humanity, the eight million species. Protesters call on labor to protest Fukushima nuclear waste dumping. This was South Korea. The, uh, the protest tritium. Because that's all it got out. It's not like the buildings exploded, Dana. Oh, okay. The action was organized by the Sydney Candlelight Action based in Korea. Community was part of a global day of action. Protest in Tritium. Japan is sending radioactive waste on a trip around the world, which is a great way of thinking about it, but what do you think happened? I'm confused how anybody cannot do some basic research. Well, he can't get in the media if he does that, right? The media's not going to show you TEPCO's Neptunium 239 dispersal, which is based on uh, venting. Not, none, of, none of the models are based on the actual single meltdown or loss of fuel pools, let alone four reactor cores and eight fuel pools and detonations. How can you deny all this? Well, that's the official story now, is it didn't happen as of July the 23rd this year, a 13th rather. And from what I can tell, the official story in English came out of South Korea, which we showed you earlier. The action was organized by the Sydney Candlelight Action in Korea community and was part of a global day of action. Now, they, they haven't stopped hemorrhaging it into the ocean because there obviously there's nothing contained in those two. Reactor 2 has gone complete China syndrome. The fuel pools burnt for days at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. There's no catchers. That's going straight down to China syndrome, which is deep earth mode. From the Pacific, it will reach uh, and doesn't need oxygen, so it'll just burn forever. There's no way to extinguish it. From the Pacific, it will reach beaches and seas globally, entering fish, marine plants, other sea creatures, mammals. I actually done a whole presentation on that on Sunday night show. And via evaporation through rainfall, it will find its way back onto the land across the planet. Yeah, something like that. Once that starts, you know, that never goes away. This was a major pulse event. This was a major pulse event. So the buildings are already melted down, lost their inventories. This again is France's model based on 16 days from the earthquake and nine days after the last reactor had detonated. Uh, this is all the models are showing us the same thing. And so the protesters. They don't know, look at the, they, they managed to get pictures, but shouldn't, instead of that placard, shouldn't they be using this placard on, on their pictures? And because I can green screen um, that picture in there, if I wanted to. Protesters call on labor. Labor's like, yeah, oh yeah, now we're right all over it. Yeah, yeah, what is it, tritium? Huh? Oh yeah, okay. The Australian Embassy in Tokyo staged a Fukushima fish and chips dinner as a public relations stunt in support of the nuclear wastewater release. Australia's so disgusting. Have we ever come across a single Australian story where they weren't just terrible examples of humans? When it comes to nuclear, I'm not, all these years, not a sing I can't point my finger at a single story where they weren't completely dishonest. Killed by dogs, a father's rage carved in a tombstone of a boy slain 
after the 1923 Canto Quake earthquake. I, I, th I guess allegedly this must be the kid. Yeah, that's a six-year-old. And, and so what happened was in the, after the chaotic is aftermath of the 1923 Great Canto earthquake, the spread of false information led to the tragic military police killing of a six-year-old boy alongside of his uncle. So that earthquake, let me bring that up on the screen. These are old footage. You can see how it just ripped the road to pieces. This was a land earthquake. It just flattened everything. And people have vivid memories, obviously. And so it was around 6,000 or 100,000 people died in the earthquake. But there was around... 6,000 South Koreans who were killed by the Japanese. Everybody, w there was rumors allegedly, and around 700 Chinese, uh, what they call mob violence. Well, s killing 7,000 people, uh, I don't know if mob violence is just absurd, con just ridiculous savagery. There's 105,000 people died in the earthquake, and so the rumors were that the South Koreans and the Chinese were mistaken for South Koreans. Uh, oh, maybe this is North Koreans. I, I, I never did quantify whether this was South or, or North that we're talking about. I know they occupied North Korea for uh, 50 years, so this probably was North Koreans, right? And uh, they were forced out of there after Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And UN was like, oh, you're not being free. And so for the last 70 years, UN has carried out a police action that killed millions, millions missing, millions in refugee camps, millions unaccounted for, millions of orphans. Because they had just changed their name from the League of Nations to the, the United Nations, the United Unnation. Deployed them. So they were spreading claims that the Koreans were setting fires in the rubbles and killing the injured and stuff like this. And so the rumors spread quick in 1920s. And then anybody, a lot, and a lot of Japanese that had a Korean look to them were killed also. Women, uh, pregnant women and toddlers were also killed Sounds a bit right when you look at what they're doing to the planet right now. And you look at the carnage and the lies they're doing to cover it up. It's like somebody got a, a fake lighthouse and all the, there's a whole bunch of boats crashing the ocean. And all I got is a cigarette lighter. I'm up on a windy hill and I'm holding up the cigarette lighter of the real harbor so that the boaters can find their way into the harbor. But you can't see my candle light or my little cigarette lighter because you got this great big false lighthouse paid for by the Japanese government to kill everything that is stupid enough to come their way or eat their food. Members of the U.S. Congress sample Fukushima seafood and sake. Yeah, you didn't think it was just going to be the Australians were going to turn their back on you, did you? Members of U.S. Congress and Saki. Uh, Japan, uh, you hear me, when you hear me laughing, that's Gallo's laugh, because there's nothing funny about the stuff I'm talking about. But um, it scares you when you understand the significance of these little nuances, and there's so many of them, minutiae and details of details uh, for these stories that I, I toss out there, unfortunately, because I've been doing it for so long, it's not that I'm complacent and I show you all the documentation to get you on the right page at the beginning, which takes 15, 20, and no me, half an hour, an hour sometimes to make sure, you know, that you're on the right page. And then if you just watch the beginning of each show, I win, and you do too. If I win, you win. 
Members of the U.S. Congress have been invited to taste seafood from the nuclear wastelands of Fukushima. Now, why is Hokkaido there? Hokkaido is a very northerly island. Why would you do? You know why you're doing that, right? Which has been hit hard by China's blanket suspension of imports. Now, China, South Korea, Taiwan are hoodwinking the Asian population by claiming nothing got out of their only tritium. And to prove that the tritium is dangerous, China is going to block the food. But the food should have been blocked for 12 years. And so Gallagher, who's the U.S. House Select Committee Chairman, so you know me, normally I only bring you uh, pictures. But uh, I, thought, I thought it was so horrific. I'm actually going to bring you the video so you can hear it yourself because it's hard to comprehend that these are... Uh, the Japanese Embassy in Washington... I'll, I'll fix that and start it again. I'll just adjust it. The Japanese Embassy in Washington has invited members of the U.S. Congress to sample seafood from Fukushima and Hokkaido. The two prefectures have been hit hard by China's suspension of Japanese seafood imports. This event was held at the U.S. Capitol on Monday night with support from the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party. More than 40 Democratic and Republican lawmakers tasted Fukushima sake and sushi topped with sea bass, flounder, and scallops caught off Fukushima and Hokkaido. China stopped all seafood imports from Japan in late August in response to the release of treated and diluted water from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The U.S. Select Committee chair says China's ban is unjustified. I think it's based on numerous scientific studies is that it's been safely dealt with in no way impacting the quality uh, of the seafood. So for the CCP to suggest otherwise, I, as I said at the outset, I think is complete misinformation and disinformation. Today we offer scalps from Fukushima where reconstruction is underway and Hokkaido. I want as many people as possible to know about the deliciousness and safety of Japanese seafood. The treated water at the Fukushima plant is released into the sea after diluting it to reduce tritium levels. The final level is about one-seventh of the World Health Organization's guidelines for drinking water. The International Atomic Energy Agency has confirmed that the discharge plan is consistent with international safety standards. Well, that sounds great. So, but why are you banding Hakido? Is, which is, in the, let me show you again, it's the top oil, and I'm going to zoom in, but uh, it'll disappear. But uh, Sapporo, you see at the very top there? That's the first time I think I've heard of Hikido being banned. Now, um, the buildings are destroyed, see? Japan... And they're, they're not talking about food, they're just talking about seafood. They're not talking about the farms that they're growing food in the nuclear wasteland. So there's many things going on here. And so you always see this narrative uh, release and dilute it and treat it and water. Uh, more than 40 Democratic Republican lawmakers sampled the food and the drink. One of them, Select Committee Mike Gallagher, who refused to be a human, said it was been scientifically verified. Which, of course, the only way you can scientifically verify it, and I apologize for not showing you all four reactors. I just think two of these is enough. Uh, Chernobyl was about one one hundred of either one of these. Chernobyl was brutal too. You can find the uh, presentations on my site. And so saying it's been scientifically verified, which is U what they're talking about is UN, and they didn't take it their own samples or something like that. They took what TEPCO gave them. They didn't even do the multi 
inspections that they're supposed to do on the samples, but they didn't even get their own samples. They've only been there five times in 12 years, all of them this year. Japanese food and sake are very popular. Yeah, and I meant to say it was earlier, and I got sidetracked where they couldn't sell, you know, they got a billion pounds of rice just in Fukushima Prefecture. And so they they were making rice out of the sake and uh, turning it, and, sa and they opened up a, the Fukushima Prefectural Government opened up a sake shop of Fukushima's sakis in New York City. Which blows me away that that could even happen. But uh, now we've got hindsight, unfortunately, unfortunately. We see this long history of this kind of uh, betrayal from the industry. The industry that hates everything that moves or crawls or breeds or have replicating cells. <laughs> but must take further measures to promote the quality and safety of the seafood. Again, avoiding avoiding the rice and the farms and, and the peaches and cucumbers and strawberries and so actually let me just because they avoid that and we don't really cover it much we're so barbarized by the propaganda from july the 23rd on let me try a couple of quick Spots here, see if I can find my folder. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, nothing showed up. So, let me put in rice. Oh, that's going to show up. <coughs> oh, God, everything. And away we go. Let's try this. Just, just blast through whatever I got in the top part here. You know, Dana. Rice grown near Fukushima plant cleared for sale to farmers. I wouldn't eat it. I feel guilty growing it and selling it. And I played that video on quite a lot over the many years we've been doing this. Rice planted 10 miles from Fukushima. The residents can't stay in town and it's intended for sale. And you notice you never see the word tritium in any of this stuff. Help on it add Sikhs employees at Fukushima to carry out a conversation. Does that sound like academics or nuclear scientists? Plutonium was detected all over a village 25 miles from the plant. Something terrible, dreadful is happening. Yeah, and all the governments have turned their backs on humanity and the 8 million species, haven't they? The Australian catastrophic radiation contamination at rice fields 60 kilometers from the Diachi disease factory. No crop for at least 300 years. Japanese rice causing diarrhea, which is huge doses we're talking about. Fish are told not to send any more donated rice. That's another thing they've been doing wherever there's huge tragic events. Japan is shipping the rice there to the victims. Shocking official made a mandatory to use Fukushima rice in school lunches. Think about the way they're framing that narrative because sh it is shocking it's like Russian roulette only 10% of school lunches in Fukushima are tested for radiation does this sound like it's, everything is hunky dory and it's just tritium Japanese mayor says students are gaining knowledge by eating radioactive food in school lunches it's surreal These are, this is, and there's no uh, don't be a chicken the mayor tells the parents who are concerned their children are eating radioactive lunches. Six in ten Fukushima children have diabetes. What a terrible statement that is, isn't it? So you can see that there's a lot of questions about the food in Japan, yet no doubt. You have two completely liquefied, it liquefied. Human civilization may destroy itself. Liquefaction of three reactor cores was actually four and eight fuel pools. And the first time any core is ever liquefied and still out of control. Doomsday like radiation. Doomsday like radiation. If the fuel pools if fire release if fire in a fuel pool at reactor four would be a global catastrophe. Less reactor for.
It's a complete loss, and they say it would be a doomsday, which is an appropriate term, right? And is there, um, because the plumes covers the planet, and just about, this one is Xenon 133. You know, I, and I showed you earlier, I showed you cesium 137 at around 10 million per cubic meter. I showed you 220 million atoms of iodine 129 per liter. What, 20 million atoms is iodine 131 per liter. There was another study on um, sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs of 1,500 atoms per cubic meter in America. Oh, these are all American Canadian studies covering the continents. The xenon 133 was shown around a million becquerels per square meter disposition radioactive fallout. And it's going to be much worse than that because th the models are only based on venting. They're not based on the actual loss of the entire inventories of one reactor, let alone four of them. 96% of the residents in just a cesium December to Fort, 56% of them in Tokyo. And claim they're not dangerous. Of course it's dangerous. Your body is pulsing energy in your body every second. erects your organs. It causes up to around 1,800 diseases to manifest over, you know, because your body is so susceptible now. Your immune system is completely lost. Not only that, your body is going to be saturated with white blood cells. So you're not even going to have the oxygen and nutrition anymore. And then the, talk about tritium. Tritium. Tritium, there's a lot of tritium. Tritium is the last thing you're worried about. You're worried about everything that comes out of there touching water and turning it into tritium is the best way to look at it. Because right? all the fallout, wherever it lands, that becomes tritiated water too. And that atom still exists. The final level is about one-seventh of the World Health Organization, which is like the International Atomic Energy or the IAEA or IRPA or UNSCLEAR or the rest of them, our same organization, UN, which is taking over your planet. Your country has no say in anything. You vote for a leader, but the leaders are all pro-UN. That's the only ones that will be running. That's the only parties that are going to win. And then your, your, your country is being looted to fund UN each year. And they have their own militaries, their own nuclear weapons, their own submarines. They have their own military. And that's what happened to North Korea. They needed to practice on somebody because that's what bullies do, right? And then they said, oh no, they're going to get you if we don't destroy them for a thousand years. And who would have they attacked in the last 70 years? Nobody. Who did they attack the year, uh, 50 years before that? Nobody, because Japan occupied them. For 70 years, UN occupied them. And uh, if, you're, if you're behind land, sea, and air embargoes for 120 years, how do you think your country is going to turn out? U.S. backs Japan's U.S. backed Japan against China's Fukushima stance with sushi and sake. And normally they roll out Kathleen Higley or some other bumbling monster from the industry. But they're not even doing that anymore. They don't know what they're missing, said House Committee Chairman. They're going to get their nickel out of him, aren't they? As members dine on Japanese seafood at the Washington event, sorry about that, a cloggy up in the throaty throaty that time. Chinese ban over wastewater is safety concern built on a foundation of falsehood. Yeah, well, which is true, right? Because China. China has no illusions. China knows that's actually what happened, right? They're playing you by talking about tritium. They're blaming the banning of the food on tritium instead of the anthropogenic man-made perpetual radioactive emissions. And Gallagher knows the difference. There's no way Gallagher don't know 
that that happened is zero zilch possibility. There's zero possibility, by the way, that Gallagher doesn't know Reactor 3 looks like this, or that China doesn't know Reactor 3 looks like that, or South Korea doesn't know that it looks like that. And it's, and it's interesting because... You should find the right picture, but I probably won't. So I showed you before. Well, here, this will do. So we got video and pictures of that blowing up, and we got videos and pictures of Reactor 1 blowing up. A bit loud, and I'll turn that down for next time. We got videos and pictures of Reactor 1 blown up, Reactor 3 blown up, which are all right alongside of Reactor 4, but we got no videos or pictures of Reactor 4 blowing up, or at 1,000 tanks at Fukushima. But I think, uh, you know, if I, if I had to pick between one or the other, I would pick for the video of Reactor 4. Why don't we see that video? If it's just tritium coming out of buildings that each had millions of pounds in. Officially, it's 2.2 grams of tritium, don't worry, because it's all in the tanks, Dana. They don't know what they're missing. U.S. backs against Japan. Safety concerns are built on a foundation, the time of China, a foundation of falsehoods. And it's true, because China won't acknowledge that that's gone. So he's not telling a whole lie, but he is telling a lie. <coughs> so they're working together. You know, with that narrative, that means they're working together. Your select house committee and Chinese Communist Party opened its latest volley against Beijing, that which is the latest insult, latest being a key word, right? In an unusual setting on Monday, Sushi and Saki Night, a Capitol Hill co-hosted by the Japanese uh, Embassy in Washington. China was one of several countries to criticize Japan's decision to start releasing that, uh, around 30 years worth of radioactive water. You can't even decommission a normal nuclear plant in 30 years. So how are you going to decommission? <coughs> like Oppenheimer's legacy is still not dealt with. You got 80 years of legacy but all of it's hemorrhaging into the environment. This is, there's no way to have a future. So, uh, again, when Grossi, the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, gave Kushido uh, his little blue book they've been studying the, the whole thing for two years with, said they're not a regulator, they don't have the authority, and that it's up to Japan's government to decide what to do, excuse me. The tanks were all built at the one time, 2013. And this comes up a lot, so we got a solution for that too. Bear with me. We'll get there. There we go. So the whole bloody thing is, is confusing. So in 2013, there was 1,000 tanks. 2023, there is 1,000 tanks. And, uh, you can see Mary Yamaguchi all the way up until 2023 with that same version and many others, of course. 1,000 steel tanks in 2013. 2014, there was 1,200 tanks. In 2017, there was 900 tanks. Try walking with both of your feet flat on the ground. In 2019, uh, rather, there was 1,000 tanks, the third line from the bottom, fourth line from the bottom, left-hand side. In 2021, there was 1,000 tanks. And in 2023, Mary Yamaguchi uh, was 1,000 tanks. Uh, third line from the bottom, uh, reactor cores accumulated in 1,000 tanks. So you got 1,000 tanks. And in 2023, Murray Yamaguchi, they show you the, the alleged mixing, pumping station where they're going to mix the, 
to tritium water, which is now the official story. The reactor's no longer melted down. Now it's just tritium, right? Stored in a thousand tanks. Back to the story that we were just doing from today. The International Atomic Energy Agency has said that the treated water from Fukushima would have an eligible impact on people and environment, and Japan's action were consistent with relevant and... Now, we've heard that exact narrative verbatim, word for word, for, since July the, 20, uh, July the 13th. It's the exact same sentences. Early on Monday, Lee Jong Mong, the leader of the main opposition party in South Korea, who's leading the charge, went on a hunger strike against Fukushima, and is leading the charge. 86% of the population is with him and is upset. And so when he got so weak and sick uh, yesterday, protesting the dumping, the tritium, uh, when he got to the hot, they had to take him to the hospital. So then they uh, charged him with a crime of some type. Because you got to get rid of any descending voices, and it's his turn to go. Last year, Japan's seafood exports exports were worth 2.6 billion. South Korea has imported around 1.5 billion pounds since Fukushima. But wait, but because so again, there, all the narratives are focused on seafood instead of food. And again, they're quoting Gallagher. U.S. Atomic Energy Agency in Japan agreed on continuous safety review of the discharge of the water, which is interesting because they haven't been there for 12 years. They've been there five times this year to promote the reusing of the soil, the 30 million one-ton bags. It's quite the story, isn't it, where they... They picked up 30 million, some say 60 million, we'll say 30 million one-ton bags. I don't want to split any hairs. And it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around it. So I got a neat way of doing it. And it takes a few more moments. Years, days, weeks. It's so hard to tell this story because there's the, the amount of documentation available, you can't cover it in a year. At least I can't anyway. Okay, so harvesting food alongside a one ton bags radiation. You got 30 million of these one ton bags they admit to. And they admit to dumping it directly into the lakes, the rivers, the estuaries, the streams, the coast. Fukushima contaminated soil. It's 2019. There are currently 105,000 on site storage locations throughout the prefecture. Al Jazeera, you can see there, is saying 30 million tons of contaminated stock soil stocked in open-air sites, and those open-air sites is 105,000 sites. And they might look something like this. And so in the wintertime, because the bags are only meant to last a couple of years, the water runs right through the bags anyway and washes the radiation to the environment, back into the environment. Uh, these communities are not abandoned because of tritium. The bags are not full of tritium. There's 105,000 sites in and the farmers, you know, these bags were picked up on the farmer's land to clean up radiation. And the farmer went back in and is, in this case here, harvesting food. <coughs> Again, right across from thousands and thousands of one-ton bags surrounded by millions and millions and millions of one-ton bags in a perpetual nuclear wasteland because the reactors are still melting down. And that's not even International Atomic Energy Agency. Right, they've only been to the site five times in 12 years, all of them were this year. And so there's quite a few of these pictures. But in the clean, clear pictures, when you zoom in, somebody taped that on the back. They printed it out on their printer and taped it back. And if you count the tanks, you end up with 750, if you include the little small ones. 
According to a statement, the agreement was signed by the International Atomic Energy Agency Director General Raphael Grossi on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly in New York today. So he said, hey, psst, come over here. Hey, want to buy a one-ton bag of radiation? And I mean, anybody, I can understand skepticism, so I'll get you a plane ticket and a bunch of markers. You can go down to America on the 30 million one-ton bags of radiation. Dana, radiation is safe. Okay, all right, yeah. On the sidelines, United Nations General Assembly, sidelines. The International Atomic Energy Agency has actually not been reviewing the safety of Japan's plan on how to handle the, the there is no treated water. I explained that because everything I say is controversial. Everything if I had a radio show, uh, nobody would listen to it because oh he, he's lying. There's got no evidence of that. That's what they'd be saying about me, right? That's what they've been saying for years. Now they just don't say anything. They're making fun of me, attacking me. Uh, attacking me is their favorite when all the research expeditions they attacked me that was brutal what they done to me they're scumbags and then there's oh my goodness you guys are in, you guys are dangerous psychos so the the Arriva system in April 2014 three years later it didn't work yeah, I had another system similar that was called the Areva system in 2014, three and a half years later. That didn't work. They had the Ceres system was supposed to separate cesium-137 because that's a lie on its own. That didn't work and disappeared from the lexicon uh, in 2013. And they admit then, too, by the way, that the plant has released enormous amount of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean. Not leaking. It's not actually leaking. There's no plethora of leaks. The buildings are actually leveled. And that the ice, the wall, a fence to restrict the flow through the site didn't work. That the ice wall didn't work. That uh, failed to deliver a fence. Just one more of them there. That bike. Groundwater bypass operation didn't work. And uh, hugely acknowledged originally that everything is out of control. If it was just tritium, they would have mopped it up. France says Japan has lost control. The French should leave the country. And, and France knows a few things about nuclear. What they've done to the French Polynesians was equal to a Hirish or Nagasaki bomb every week for 12 years. Worth a follow. Swiss Embassy evacuates Tokyo because you know nuclear wasteland, right? Tokyo lost all control, said the Energy Minister. This could one day be considered the start of the ultimate catastrophe of the world and the planet. If you go back and watch my last Sunday's video on the marine die-off due to Fukushima, where I show you videos and pictures of my research expeditions we carried out for six years for four to five months a year at a time. That'll probably, I'm, I'm still not recovered from that. And we're trying to do desperately carry out research expeditions on the East Coast. We've got 16 ocean trips this year, but we can't afford to fix everything. We're trying, we're getting there, but we missed the opportune time. Hopefully we get back up and running in the near future. Really, I'm really hoping <laughs> I'm lost my mind at this stage. Even broke down for almost a month. It's unbelievable, huh? Bad luck. Well, everything is just years and years and years of research. <coughs> Dragged it all over the country. Bound to break down at some point. I can't even believe we made it this far without any major events like we're having now. A thousand years, we'll get it running at some point. A thousand years from now, contaminated water from Fukushima. Not may still be entering the Pacific Ocean. You, you can't uh, re you can't put the genie back in the bottle, my goodness. And it's not tritium, it's a siever per hour per liter. <coughs> and we have huge numbers. 
We have huge numbers. Maybe I will dig up a few of them. Just for badness. You see what the what the big shiny thing brings us today. Oh, there's it right there, I wonder. Well, that's a shorter version. I forgot about that one. Hang on here. Oh, that's the... Let's throw it all on the pile here. Let's just zip down through memory's lane of the... of memory's lane. This is worth it. Japanese government criticized TEPCO. Uh, 2013 poor management of leaks of Fukushima Daiichi. Who's that? Suga, the former prime minister of of madness. TEPCO releases video groundwater entering the crippled complex 2013. At uh, 2.2 sievers per hour, 2,200 millisievers, radiation levels around the tanks used to store the thousands of tons of radioactive water on site at Fukushima in 2013 is not tritium, but it's incredible 2.2 sievers per hour per liter. And so a gallon of this in a, in a can at the subway station at the airport, everybody walks past it, dies that day. ELP system brought back online at Fukushima 2014, but didn't work. Typical fish can't estimate how frequent water will be discharged at Fukushima. Think about that statement. They can't, they're struggling to keep their heads above the contaminated water. More than 5,000 tons of contaminated water leaking out of this one cable trench. And the laboratory test showed 8.7 million beckles of tritium. But see, there's a problem with that equation. It was 2.35 billion beckles of cesium and 750 million beckles of other radioactive material. Well, it's the, the biggest byproduct is the curium isotope. You need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. But even, let's just say it was only cesium, you couldn't read the tritium signature because it's drowned out by the cesium. And you couldn't read the cesium because that's going to be drowned out by the plutonium. But you can't read the plutonium because that's going to be drowned out by the curium signal which is uh, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker for than you do for plutonium, which is named after the devil. Like 5,000 tons is not leaking. That's a catastrophic event. That's 5,000 liters, uh, 5 million liters. Um... Case one hasn't paid attention to the constant stream of international experts who've called for TEPCO to be removed as the organization in charge of decommissioning the crippled Fukushima Daiichi. Again, right? The incompetence of Fukushima doesn't escape anybody. TEPCO finds defects in the Alps water system at Fukushima. And um, elementary, well, they can't get it to work, see, because once you start it up, you can never get near the filters again, or you can't get, like the hoses that are coming in at 2200 millisieverts, 2.2 sieverts, which is just beta, by the way, they're not acknowledging gammas and alphas and neutrons, but uh, this is a crazy headline. This is a Koryama, I believe. Elementary school in Japan is using water bottles to shield the students from Fukushima. Is using water bottles. And what they're doing is they're using water bottles uh, in 
crates inside and outside the classroom to shield the student from the radiation and works by about drops the radiation numbers by about one third. This is in Koryama. There's a high amount found around her town. Absorbed dose in red bone marrow in Japan for the first time. This was uh, United Nations who says they only found tritium. Has just studied, as is showing you, these contaminated communities. So the third row is the Beckwells per square meter. And the row over there is the population. And the first row is the community. So these are all these communities are nuclear wasteland. But Koryama is... Every house in Koryama is entitled to be decontaminated. And so it should be abandoned. But to do that, instead of moving the children out, that blows me away. I have concern about the high amount of radioactive material which have been found around the town. While school lunches are tested for radiation, Parents are concerned because they are largely unable to find out where the items were originally produced. You're, you're in a nuclear wasteland. Because it's outside the evacuation zone, the government has barely conducted any decontamination activities, despite the fact it's in a nuclear wasteland, and so are all the other communities. Human error is the cause of contaminated leak at Fukushima. This is just more downplaying. A 240 million Beckwells per liter of better rate <coughs> leaked out of a stink in nine hours. Per liter of just better rate. This is two sievers per better rate. It can't just be beta. It's got to be alphas, neutrons, and gammas. No, no, Dan, it's just tritium. And so the problem, um, the problem with this is you can't filter that, right? The filter, just to guard the hoses you're using, you can't step over and walk alongside them. It's a lethal dose. It can't be done, see? And this, and they already acknowledged, and I showed you the documentation, that this is what they were putting in the tank. Now, if you put that into a tank, you can't, the tank can't shield. Obviously, tank can't shield you. You're talking just better, 1.4 million sieverts per hour, just better. It can't be just better. It has to be neutrons, gammas, alphas, because you're pouring it over the reactor core and then putting it in the tank is the official story. So it's full of particulates. So you're going to have a chain reaction in the bottom of the tank in the sediment of fuel, because it's fuel that's picking up. Like the reactors are actually meltdowns. You can't go in there and put a hose there in the first place. And TEPCO also admits the workers were not sufficiently monitoring the levels of water in the tanks, ignoring the alarms. First off, if you're putting that number in the tanks, you're not ignoring it. You just don't want to die. You can't go there ever again. And by proxy, you can't build another tank. So you, you can't build another tank if you fill one of them up, of that kind of stuff. Typical submits criteria to non-regulatory agencies, which were created after the meltdowns, to dump the contaminated rainwater in the ocean. They don't own the ocean. Look, if that was stuff you were pouring over the fuel, you can never take that picture. You die right away. That's a Medusa if that's actually... The, the tanks were built to manipulate you lead you away from the truth and now it's been weaponized against you and this so-called dumping into the ocean leak leak at number three which doesn't even exist anymore
Number three is that one over there. And like to call something like that a leak, I can barely contain my contempt. Regulators urge TEPCO to dump that treated water into the Pacific Ocean. It's 2014, 2013. Well, it did. They don't have any filtration systems, see, in 2013. There was no Arivas, no Elps. And that a normal operator, a reactor, can fill up all those tanks six times a day, the thousand tanks that they allegedly had there. So this is 2013, November the 18th. TEPCO begins critical work on loading Fukushima Daiichi Unit 4 spent fuel pool. So what did that actually look like? Well, that's Unit 4 right P uh, to the right, which is right alongside of Medusa to the left, by the way. And so when you look at that picture, do you see that one in the picture? Do you see that inside of this? But what is interesting when you zoom in on these pictures, you know, start noticing this pixelated you know, see the pixelation up right there? Why is that pixelated? Why is it pixelated at the top? Well, there's seven, that's, you see the symbol up there, Chinese, or Japanese rather. But why are they pixelating that? And America has 70 of these reactors, so when you see reporters in there, guess where they're to? On Monday, TEPCO <coughs> and workers began removing spent fuel from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi Unit 4 spent fuel pool, which holds 15,000 assemblies. Well, the buildings were stuffed with reactor cores because they don't have a repository. It was infinitely more than that. The project has been labeled by some as one of the most dangerous nuclear operations in history. And each assembly is 80 fuel rods, which is actually 100, which by assembly can contain up to 77,500 trillion beckles of radioactivity. Uh, there's around 5 trillion in a gram. So they're being completely dishonest, right? Uh, but around 1% of plutonium by weight. So if you only say you got fourteen hundred and forty at one percent, well, I'm not sure what I'm doing there. This is pretty old math, right? Eighty. Yeah, they're eighteen pounds each. There's eighty fuel rods. That's fourteen hundred and forty in assembly, which is fourteen point four pounds of plutonium per assembly, which is eighteen thousand nine hundred pounds of plutonium. If you just go by their numbers. But if you go by the real numbers, obviously this is infinitely more. So you're talking around 100,000 pounds of plutonium. And it's been said pre-Fukushima, two pounds was enough to guarantee the extermination of humanity. Distributed out. And they just distributed out, didn't they? TEPCO failed to deliver the promise to install a fence to reduce contamination. New map of the iodine but Americans flew over 3 million beckles per square meter. Typical mitts contaminated water leaking from multiple temporary storage pits. So these pictures are super interesting. And what you should know about this is <coughs> these are big, so-called, uh, not necessarily portable, but temporary holding uh, mechanisms. And if you're going to put this water, because that's what they're doing, they're taking water, pumping it out of the reactor so it doesn't go in the ocean. This is before they built the tanks, right? And here's some of the tanks they brought in by ship right away, small ones. But eventually they started assembling these big ones, right? <coughs> and so they said they were pumping water out of the reactors, and, and it was too highly radioactive to, put in, to, to do anything with it, so they temporarily put it in these 
big so-called bags. We'll call them bags as a temporary holding. Now, the problem with it is you're talking about multiple sieverts per liter. You're talking about about a million sieverts. To, that's a lethal dose. There's nothing there to shield you. You can't get up and walk around on it. And you can't walk near the hoses, let alone walk around on it. Storage tanks. And so they built a, and see the small ones, there's a couple, see the different rows of them? That's part of their 1,000 large storage tanks, which are not large. And, but uh, they felt an obligation, I guess, to hoodwink you. And this was the cover story from the very beginning. And now 12 years later, they're claiming all of these tanks hold 2.2 grams of tritium. 60 meters long, 53 meters wide, and 6 meters deep. And uh, pits were measured at 6,000 becquerels per cubic centimeter. Cubic centimeter. Estimated over 700 billion becquerels of strontium had already leaked at the time of the announcement. By the way, uh, this is their professional lawyers, right? More contaminated water leaks, and every time I hear the word leak, just it's ridiculous to hear that word. It drives me absolutely insane. At Fukushima Daiichi reported, April 13, uh, 290 becquels radiation per cubic centimeters. Uh, these are huge, crazy, absurd numbers we're talking about. Because they allude to the real numbers. They're not going to tell you. 22 liters were 6.3 billion becquels. La, 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 la. 22 liters at 6.3 billion becquels is 286 million per liter. So you, you can't walk on these bags if that's true. TEPCO plans to dump water stored at Fukushima Daiichi into the ocean in 2013. I already released enormous amount, an absurd amount of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean from a plethora of points. Well, the reactors are completely destroyed. It's not hard for the radiation to get out. It had a bit of help, but you know what I mean, right? Japan working to speed up decommissioning of the Fukushima reactors. Well, you can't speed up a normal reactor. How are you going to speed up a meltdown? So they're being paid around $11 a day for their efforts. $11 US a day. <laughs> so they're being treated. They've been just totally denied any humanity whatsoever. And if you look at all these communities, right, you see Fukushima City... Uh, big numbers for uh, per square feet. In Fukushima City, over 90,000 houses are eligible for decontamination. So far, only 4,000 houses have been cleaned. 4,000 out of 90,000 houses. In other words, every house in Fukushima City should be cleaned. Same thing for Koryama City, by the way, which means you shouldn't be in that city. You can't decontaminate a house. You have to take the house down, bring it to a holding site, and then put up a chain link fence 16 feet tall with right around the whole property, each and every house. And then it has to have uh, international signs to tell it that it's radioactive. And the fence should be 900 feet back from the original contaminants for 90,000 houses. So get on top of that if you don't mind, TEPCO. But without being able to prevent the release of the materials from the disease factory, the reactors have been dispersed across the country, accumulating on previous decontaminated areas. Even houses that have been worked on previously may require further work. These are nuclear wastelands. Now, this video is from the China Syndrome, where it hit the water tables. And if the temperature is right and everything else is right, uh, now, this is the original speed. I'm going to speed it up. Just bear with me. So that's the original speed. I'm going to double the speed, and I'm going to move it forward. And what you're going to see is steam. It's hard to see it right in the top part of the screen, but you can see it at the site. But uh, 
This is 80 times normal speed. So these emissions is from the China syndrome. And if you're caught in that, you die immediately. And everything that that touches is permanently contaminated. This is why you don't see academics or nuclear scientists or nuclear corporations hanging out at Fukushima. Because this is, and this, this goes on, they have abandoned the plant many, many times because they have lethal doses floating around. These are lethal doses. You need the right temperature to see it, right? But it's always hemorrhaging up. 2015, typical gets approval to release more water. And you hear those words are never treated, by the way. More water into the Pacific. Around 300 tons. The misty ice wall won't stop the groundwater. Well, of course, well, why didn't you build a real wall? What's wrong with you people? They hired 260,000 people. So when you took the money they allegedly used and divided it by 260,000 people, everybody made $1,100, which is better than the $11 that the workers are getting on the site by far, right? But there's no money left over now to build a wall if you gave everybody $1,100. I think it was $1,144 or something. TEPCO gets approval to release more water into the Pacific. From who? Look, if this is water that's coming out of the nuclear meltdown and they're just pumping that out, there's zero possibility you're going to stand there in a paper suit and live to tell the story. It's zero possibility. Fushima Daiichi Unit 3 debris removal operation released 280 billion becquels per hour. 280 billion becquels. Uh huh. So let's look at reactor 3 first to your left. So NPI and this contraption they're putting there it doesn't physically touch reactor 3. Look at a thousand people working on it. Oh no, that's right. That's remote controlled cranes, Dana. Why, why do you use that? Because it's a lethal dose. Just walking past that spot. Cesium in the steel exported to South Korea. South Korea had to send it back. You know, 3 debris removal released 280 billion becquels per hour. So there's around uh, 5 trillion becquels in a gram of fission product 5 trillion so being very dishonest because the reactors these were this was the mix oxide fuel reactor on top of that so the radioactive cesium was released during a debris removal operation was found 12 miles away minimasoma rice fields no minimasoma rice fields are unbelievable wastelands He said, Fukushima plant still estimated releasing 10 million becquels per hour of, this is 10 million atoms, basically, which is just a fraction of a gram at best. In a, on a, on a, it's completely dishonest. The, the buildings are gone. You're talking about millions and millions and millions of pounds. So the cover story has been going strong for a very long time. The ice wall is not going to meet expectations because Everything blew up. Uh, Ambassador Kennedy tours Fukushima, and allegedly here she is at Reactor 4 fuel pool during that period. And of course, this is crazy talk because Reactor 4 fuel pool went boy boy. TEPCO can't bring contaminated water issues under control. And that's 2014, April. They can't bring it under control. There's certain parts of the site they don't even have control of. Tanks were built hastily to hold the highly, not treated, but highly contaminated water. And every time you hear the word leaks, it's just ridiculous. The ELP system is yet to function highly. The tanks are full of the most highly radioactive materials.
Temple says they're running out of room. 2014 to store the debris. Imagine going in there with a paper suit on. Tepco said they burnt uh, 7,000 paper suits a day. <laughs> sure you did. They believe it can reduce some 3,400 cubic meters of debris by burning the radioactive wood debris and burning the other combustible materials and crushing contaminated rubble to use to pave the roads in the nuclear wasteland cells. <laughs> this is insane. If that's not the definition of insane, what actually is? Instead of putting it in, creating a repository to store it, oh, well, burn it. So we got incinerators, right? All nuclear plants got incinerators. And they're going to crush the, the other stuff they can't burn and use it to build roads. Like, maniac doesn't really do it justice. I don't know. Like, you got to come up with your own word to describe that kind of madness. That kind of carelessness, that kind of... Uh, well, I can't come up with a word for it. It's so twisted. TEPCO to nearly double the contaminated water storage capacity by 2016. <sighs> and collecting more than 430,000 tons. It's already 90% full. I'm going to increase the capacity to 80,000 by 2016. Wait a second, he said they had a thousand tanks. TEPCO shuts down the Alps system in Fukushima Daiichi after contamination found in the storage tank. That was in March. <coughs> this was the cover story, right? Like a lot of these. TEPCO begins work on underground ice wall at Fukushima Daiichi. Tokyo, TEPCO investigates radiation levels of exhaust stack at Fukushima at 25 sieverts per hour on the ground. So how are you going to get in? That's reactor 2, that's reactor 1. How are you going to get in the stack at 25 sieverts? How are you going to get in the building, see? Because 5 sieverts is a serious lethal dose. So the stack at 25 sieverts And then reactor two melted down, uh, burnt constantly for several days and liquefied. Reactor one detonated, burnt constantly for days, and then when China syndrome also. And then the stack itself is incredibly radioactive from the projectiles from reactor three and four and one. That's some of the craziest stuff you're ever going to see. Jamaica reels information with contamination on used cars from Japan. Russia rejects cars from Japan. Japan to accept help from France, except, you know, they didn't. So they built this contraption, off-site assembled it, and then pretended everything was normal and got the media worldwide to come out and hoodwink you up. Uh, Japan government to fund the underground wall as more criminal charges filed against TEPCO, which was nationalized right away. Japanese government planned to shoulder the full cost of the operation is $470 million. And traditionally, frozen walls were just used for small jobs like river jobs where you need water. Uh, if you're building columns for a bridge, you might need to freeze everything so the water doesn't seep up from the ground. Of course, they said that uh, it didn't work. Of course, no top, no bottom. TEPCO Prefecture requests Japan's government remove TEPCO from the management of Fukushima Daiichi decommissioning. Fukushima Prefecture requested it. Uh, not so quick. Imagine being on this site when these death plumes are drifting around.
South Korea is going to send experts. Experts. They already did, right? And they didn't take any samples. Did they? And they come back and they refuse to announce what their findings were. 86% of the South Koreans are upset. South Korea dispatched a team of experts, no less, to Japan's Fukushima nuclear disease factory on Tuesday as part of a regular visit to monitor the release of the contaminated water into the ocean. It marks the first on-site activity since the first round of water release concluded. Concluded the first round, so they're saying that nothing's got out of the buildings in 12 years, and that. that's the nuclear, they're, it's an undisclosed amount of scientists, undisclosed number of experts, because you know, you got nothing to hide. From the crazy Korea Institute of Nuclear Safety. It's so scary, because they're in charge of your safety. And you know that that's the last thing they're willing to do is make you safe. It's the last thing. It's the same thing for the International Atomic Energy Agency. Japan agreed on continuous safety review of Fukushima. Continuous safety review. The International Atomic Energy Agency said on Monday, they've only been there five times in 12 years, all of them this year, twice for soil and three times to promote this tritium, 2.2 grams. They don't even call it tritium 3H, they're that arrogant. They won't even do that much for us. Japan will ensure the safety of the Japanese nationals in China, says the government spokesperson. How are you gonna do that? You can put a squad on each person from Japan and China. Imagine if, chi if the Chinese works out what really took place and that tritium is the last thing they're going to be worried about, right? What a day that would be if the world woke up and seen that. <laughs> you have no idea, folks. <coughs> I certainly uh, don't. Uh, it'll be crazy. The International Atomic Energy Agency and Japan agreed on continuous safety review right to the last drop, I believe they said. To protect people in the environment, Dana. Because they love you so much. They just want what's best for you. Because you're what matters. You're, you're, you're important. Not the nuclear industry. You come first. And your pets. And your loved ones and your friends and your families. Because we, at the nuclear industry, love you to death. Near the reactors, there's a lot of cracks in the ground. The steam coming out of there are 10 sieverts per hour in six places. 10 sieverts. You're l actually looking at footage of it. Until the very last drop, the International Atomic Energy Agency is going to be at Fukushima. It makes you and you and your loved ones are protected for a billion years because you're all that matter. Optimism needed climate change battle. Optimism. Up. Uh, this is an actor in the United Nations Goodwill Ambassador. Now get out and hoodwink all that population. We'll get you some good spots and movies. You'll be going out with the Hollywood, hogknobbing with the best of them. All you do is sell your soul. Just sell your soul and everything will work out. And most of these people have no concept of what they're connected to. So you should do that right from this farmer's field and see how great and put that thousands of one ton bags of radiation in the backdrop and tell them how nice and safe it is. Right there, Mr. Goodwill Ambassador. That's your legacy, sir. That's going to haunt you for the rest of your life and your children, too, that you hooked up with a genocidal machine you know, known as the, Internet, the UN and their subsidies, of course. Radioactivity from the plant was measured globally and blanketed the entire Northern Hemisphere. The entire Northern Hemisphere. The entire Northern Hemisphere over and over perpetually now for 12 years is the actual 
I, I did put together a little, a bunch of studies, a bunch of studies on that. The problem um, is the, you can't keep up with the madness. Significant amount of plutonium released for months. Yeah, uh, and 12 years. 12 years and then months. You forgot to put the 12 years and it happens. It was probably just a typo. I'm sure it wasn't intentional, for goodness sakes. Right? You wouldn't do it intentionally. Blah, blah. What am I looking for? Hang on. Oh, yeah, I know. How do I make sure that there's no way you can misinterpret? Oh, do you get lucky? Oh. Okay, this will do it. Chernobyl, yeah, Chernobyl. I can sum Chernobyl up in one picture for you. If Chernobyl is orphanage after orphanage after orphanage of abandoned children that are disfigured. I think that tells the story, right? Chernobyl. High frequency of albinism and tumors in birds around Chernobyl. Prenatal loss of 400 male fetuses. Think of may. Why, why did they say male fetuses? <laughs> Thyroid cancer incidences in Belarus residences exposed to Chernobyl. They closed uh, 9,400 farms in Ireland and Scotland, the United Kingdom. But Chernobyl was one one thousandth of a Fukushima. And Chernobyl was brutal. It was literally just. It's less than one one thousand of Fukushima. It was uh, graphite. It was nasty, but it's not pure uranium, pure plutonium, like Fukushima. It wasn't uh, four reactors and eight fuel pools, each with around five or six reactor cores in them of pure uranium, pure plutonium. It was already gone through a chain reaction, and so global, global cancer after Fukushima, global. And if you're only going to study cesium, then what about the other 600 significant isotopes, antibiotic isotopes we've got to worry about? Global local cancer incidences and deaths, global deaths from Fukushima. And we're not talking about the exporting, where they're exporting all the food from the actual nuclear wastelands, surrounded by nuclear wastelands. Reproductive outcome among immigrant women exposed to Chernobyl. Most people back then were hard to track. They, they had to abandon them. Dietary habits. Too much following the Chernobyl accident, which never even had a containment, folks. It was a constant accident. And thyroid cancerous and population-based cancer control studies. And so in one way, we might be lucky Chernobyl melted down because it had no containment. So if it had lasted for 40 years, the emissions would have been significantly more than probably what they already are. And we don't know 100% if that's true. If, if, we, if we go by their approximation, right, it's, it's 100 tons or something that they emit to, or I shouldn't say emit to, allude to, so no, I guess that would be worse, actually. Does Chernobyl derive radiation impact to develop and stability of certain species? And Belarus and Ukraine follow from Chernobyl 
overall cancer incidences in Finland. Trends in human sex odds at birth in Europe and Chernobyl nuclear power plant. So more males than females. That's what they're looking for. And then you can say, well, the whole population was irradiated and poisoned. Secondary sex ratio in Italy after the past 80 years. Potential impact radiological contaminants after atmospheric testing, which is a nuclear war, and after Chernobyl. Trends in human sex odds at birth in Europe and the Chernobyl nuclear plant. And then, so after weapons testing on uh, human sex odds, more males than female studies worldwide. Cancer incidences in a male adult population relation to estimated protracted colon dose. Oh, the, the, the madness is crazy. Down syndrome and autism our STEM studies show up right away after nuclear accidents and, and for many years following because they know that Down syndrome and autism uh, and intellectual development, mental behavior disorders in children exposed uh, in utero following the Chernobyl. And so there's later in life there's Alzheimer's and dementia. But early life, there's intellectual development, mental and behavioral disorders. And so after a big accident, you say, oh, it's just radiophobia, just a mental illness. But there really is mental illnesses. And the people that are doing those studies are criminal for doing it. Down syndrome in Scotland after Chernobyl. A significant higher than expected incidences of cases in the year following Chernobyl. Pregnancy outcome in Sweden after Chernobyl. Any idea why they're doing those studies? And so think about what, if it's happened to the humans, what's happening to the most vulnerable species? Birds, the bees, the insects, the, the land animals, the mammals. Incidences of legal abortions in Sweden following Chernobyl. Influence of post-Chernobyl fallout on birth defects, abortion rates in Austria. Legally induced abortions in Denmark after Chernobyl. The effects of Chernobyl explosion on induced abortions in Italy. Infant mortality after Chernobyl. Pregnancy outcome in Norway after Chernobyl. In Finland, pregnancy, legal abortions, congenital abnormalities in Hungary. Female reproductions near radiation influences after nuke Chernobyl. So there's a lot of emphasis on survivability of fetuses. Now, if you flip that to the insects, the birds, the mammals, the animals, infant mortality, and think of all the names on each of these studies have to pay their mortgages and their children's soccer and music lessons and college tuitions. and So they cut your throat to do that. Risk of radiation exposure to children and their mothers. Impropriately, right? Radiation dose to the Japanese and the world population, world population. Radiation dose to the Japanese, world population. Sex and secondary sex ratio trends in associated gender Pacific births near nuclear facilities in France and Germany. Post radiation syndrome. Chronic fatigue syndrome-like diseases, around 1,800 diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries, etc., etc. Heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome. Results and valuations of 30 years of health recording Norwegian dairy cattle population post-Chernobyl. Sure, I mean, Santa Susana was 463 mile islands. Fukushima blows all the nuclear meltdowns worldwide into one great big pile and an annihilates it. It's so much worse. Human sex ratio at birth and residential proximities just to nuclear facilities. So they're, like they're assuming everybody at a, around nuclear facilities within 50 miles got poisoned. That's why they're doing that study. Because you can't contain it, see? And the fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation in your environment. 
Don't worry, I'm only going to tell you 500 more times this year. Modeling human genetic radiation risk around nuclear facilities in Germany and five neighboring countries, a sex ratio study. Changing public attitudes towards nuclear energy. And so there's lots of public relation firms out there. They'll cut my throat for free. Incidences of illegal abortion, congenital abnormalities, and hungry recovered. When prenatal radiation induced brain and cognitive impairments, intelligent impairment studies, cognitive function among the elderly survivors of the atomic bomb, and they downplay that now for 72 years, 73 years. Long run exposure, and I, and I read this year I've done a great presentation on both Hiroshima and Nagasaki's anniversaries of this kind of stuff here, and significant uh, pictures, historical pictures from that time. Long run exposures, low dose radiation reduces c cognitive performance. They know what they're up to. It's hard to comprehend how really well they know they're up, what they're up to. Now, this kind of helps fill in that gap, though, I hope, right? Lake Fishman, they closed the freshwater fishing in Sweden for 30 years. Then they reopened it because Chernobyl just get them away. They're still there, so to call. Uh, clean feed as countermeasures reduce the strontium cesium in fish. No, it doesn't work that way. You, you, just, you can't have that in your body. Redistribution of sediment, cesium, in small Swedish lake. A long-term investigation of radio cesium activity concentrations in carp in North Croatia. Environmental studies radio up to cesium, which is the British, in Greek lake fish after Chernobyl. Chernobyl followed radionuclides in Poland. And why are they studying all this, I wonder? Radio cesium aquatic invertebrates, Norway, 86 and 89 after Chernobyl. Nuclear accidents impact the city. And it's hard to comprehend how much of this I've already showed over the years and how much I actually got and how much I gather up. It's hard to wrap your mind around it. And you don't need any more than this because when you if, think of this as a ticker tape of hell. Nuclear Accidents Impact Assessment Disaster Administration, post Chernobyl Insight for Agricultural in Canada. Because Canada was whacked and blanketed with this death, these death uh, clouds. On the transport of Chernobyl radioactivity, Eastern Canada, nothing escaped this disease factory. The fall of Chernobyl radioactivity in Central Ontario, Canada. 30 years after Chernobyl, long-term determination of cesium, half-life in the lynching, which is what uh, reindeer are eating, right? Say, for instance, you know, 30 years later, but yet uh, 55 countries that had a ban on Fukushima nuclear wasteland on the food, only about 14 of them do today. There was, right? And again, this is just endless evidence of why that was the worst mistake you could make in a country. Chernobyl followed in the uppermost layers of forest soil in Finland, Northeast Russia, and the Baltic countries, 2000, 2003, 15 years later. Investigation of food contamination since Chernobyl followed in Austria. Do you really think they're doing all these studies and look because they're worried about potassium 40, which the industry is drilled into the average person's brain, which doesn't come from a reactor. No radioactive contamination from Chernobyl and Hungary and wild truffles, and, but there really was. 600 kilograms of fresh fruit body are harvested a year in Hungary. They measured the cesium, but you gotta measure uranium, and plutonium, and americium, and neptunium, and strontium. You can't quantify Right, the contamination by only acknowledging cesium-137. If you don't include uh, the plethora of other isotopes, then they're dishonest, disingenuous murderers by proxy. 
Transfer of cesium from Chernobyl debris and nuclear weapons followed to different Swedish population groups. Soil in Western Canary Islands after Chernobyl, uh, modeling cesium concentrations in moose from areas highly contaminated, highly contaminated by the Chernobyl fallout. were released and spread over the northern hemisphere. So that story was about Sweden population and species. Chernobyl fallen prenatal mortality in England and Wales. Wait, what? That's like thousands of kilometers away. You can't get to England and Wales without contaminating Europe. You gotta get through Europe to get to England and Wales. A resuspension of fallout material following the Chernobyl accident. The UK sites data up to 1992 have been analyzed. Results are shown that cesium derived from Chernobyl can be measured in the ear up to six in the ear, in the ear, six years after disposition. The study of the Canadian Arctic freshwater system toward radioactive contaminants of Chernobyl. They're studying plutonium and americium. Look at that. What's the odds of that? And natural. And why are you studying natural stuff? To confuse you, see? Then you say, well, see, there's more natural and it is man-made, so therefore you're okay. And you hear that all the time over the years, and particularly studies. And it's simply not true. The effects of non-human species radiated after Chernobyl. Cesium follow from Fukushima rivals Chernobyl. Like, it's infinitely, just one reactor is 100 Chernobyls uh, in Fukushima, for goodness sakes. Fukushima is pure uranium, pure plutonium. Each of the two fuel pools at the top of each building had decades of reactor cores, maybe up to six. We know the pools were stuffed. We know they have no repository. We know that's where they kept it. <coughs> Once it goes through a chain reaction, everything coming out of there is a hot particle, and the inventory is massive. Analysts of the Japan's ministry, science ministry data, reveals high level of radioactivity on the ground outside the exclusion zone, the whole country. Maybe I'll cover that a bit more tomorrow night, but... Cleanup of urban areas uh, in er countries contaminated by Chernobyl fallout. Clean up in urban areas of countries contaminated by Chernobyl fallout. I showed you a whole lot of different countries tonight, right? And Fukushima was thousand or well thousands of times worse than Chernobyl. And Chernobyl was brutal. They actually closed nine thousand four hundred farms and islands, Scotland, and United Kingdom because of Chernobyl. For goodness sakes. You should have abandoned the country, obviously. Transfer to uh, iodine-131 to sheep's milk from vegetation contaminated by Chernobyl. Potassium fertilizer and cesium transfer from soil to grass and barley in Sweden. So they're trying to, they were, and they probably did, they, they manipulated the farmers into believing by putting potassium in the farmer's field, mitigated the radioactive fallout. It doesn't work that way. Potassium does, and if it did, it doesn't. Potassium doesn't displace uranium, plutonium, americium, neutonium, strontium, and everything else, and it doesn't work the way they're claiming. And there's quite a lot of lot of uh, they need to study so they can refer to it in a story, a propaganda, public relations stunt. See, it's a really despicable thing to suggest that you can mitigate radioactive fallout by using potassium because. If you breathe, the farmers are breathing it in, you're breathing, you're eating it or drinking it or consuming it. It sequesters in your muscles, your organs, and your bones, and it's pulsing energy every second. Your body reacts to it as an attack for the rest of your life every second and tries to repair the damage every second by the burst at almost the speed of light in every direction, wrecking cells and chromosomes and DNA. And your body can't keep up with just a single one, so it builds, eventually builds a tumor around it. But it could take decades. But if you're doing what we're seeing here, you're, you're saturated, you're breathing, you're drinking it, 
eating it, consuming it. Long lived Chernobyl fallout. Well, everything from a nuclear meltdown is long lived. Uh, the people that went out on the roof worked for 15, 20 seconds, then they went home, got sick, and eventually died. And don't let it happen to you. It's time to put your foot down. It's time to make a stand. It's, stop, it's time to stop pretending. It's time to have a conversation. I, hopefully I provided you with a, a ridiculous amount of documentation tonight. And you, unfortunately, you're not going to find any of it anywhere else on the entire planet. There's never been another show that challenged the official narrative. And we do an educational program. So the burden is I have to provide you with the documentation for my assertions. Hence, you see me go through an absurd amount of effort to achieve that. And it's hard to comprehend how much you, if you've been here the whole show, it's probably difficult to appreciate how much information I actually provided you tonight, and it came from so many di directions that at least you're armed that there's another narrative, at least you understand that the buildings were actually destroyed and that there is nothing in the tanks. The tanks were built to make you complacent, and for the majority of the planet it worked, uh, but there's nothing to be gained by being complacent and pretending this didn't happen. There's zero to be gained and everything to lose, and your loved ones are dependent upon you making informed decisions and you came to the right place. Download it and study it and learn. And you can go into my playlist and it's saturated with incredibly informed videos but many of the facets that are incredibly important to this story. And, and that those that documentation is uh, is necessary. You're not going to find it anywhere else, so find it, and download it, and, and learn. And you can extrapolate on your own. You have to sit here and listen to my squeaky voice all the time. Big shout out to uh, Ronald E. donated $20. Mark Rogo donated 50 Stephen Young, I'm my friend, of course. Donated 50 and James Lewis had donated a whopping another 130 my goodness This week. Thank you everybody. I meant to mention some of that last night and I didn't it's, it's hard to get used to shooting the video and all the work involved And uh, I'll get there. I'm working hard at it. I'm at this all day every day until the world comes to its senses so I guess I'll be here for a long time. Have a great day.